Hey everyone, welcome. Today, I'll be showing you my process that led to the making of these two interior scenes. I had no prior experience with designing interiors before and I wanted to try it and also thought it'd be a good exercise in general. So I ended up making these two rooms and I think both of them turned out uh, good enough in my opinion. And if you think they look good enough as well, I think you might enjoy the scene breakdown. So let me get to it. Step one, watch this Blender Guru tutorial. Just watch it before you start. It covers all the basics and a lot more. And I learned so many things from that one single video, not just about interior design, but a lot of other tips and tricks as well. So just go and watch it, okay? Do I really need to pitch a Blender Guru video to a Blender user? I hope not. Anyway, for the sake of saving time on this video, and to also give you a little bit of context on how I went about doing everything, let me just vaguely summarize that video for you. These were the four steps I suggested we should follow. Step one would be to model the skeleton of the room. Step two would be to light it. Step three would be to give the floor and walls some material. Step four would be to fill it with stuff that actually looks good and also goes well together. So that's what I did as well. Let me get started with the breakdown for the first room. I couldn't record the whole process while I was designing it. So let me switch to a live clip where I'm going through the whole scene and breaking it down bit by bit. Let's go. Okay, here we are. Before starting though, I just wanted to make it clear because I didn't cover it in the first section of the video. Reference images are everything. I had a pure ref canvas full of reference images. Like it was no different than a Google image search page. It was full of interior scenes with a lot of different designs so I could steal from them. Now that that's out of the way, let me get to the scene. Let me turn off everything here so I can start from scratch. Okay, as per the step one, According to Andrew's video, I made a skeleton for the room, which is just a tiny box with just random holes everywhere. Three holes on three different directions on a small little cube. That was the skeleton. And I also made this archway, like a nice separation between this room and where the camera is. Let's get to the materials on the floor and the walls which is again very simple if you look at this wall just what the hell did I do okay now this is simply just a floor material put on a wall because I saw like a wooden wall in the reference image and I really liked it in combination to the blue color that you see on this wall so this light woodish color goes really well with this blue wall that I saw on a reference image and I wanted to try that and I think it worked out pretty well in my opinion and the floor is just a simple marble material, I think. Nothing special there. Lighting was just simply an HDRI from HDRI Haven. If I go to the shading tab and go to the world section, you'll see it's a simple HDRI called the Parched Canal. It has <laughs> 20, st <laughs> 20 strength on the HDRI, that's a bit too much. I think when I add the stuff that is there in the scene, I think the 20 just simmers down a little bit. And I also think the fast GI approximation in 2.93 kind of darkens everything. If I turn it off, you'll see that it gets even brighter. If I mess with the strength now, I think I might mess up the whole scene. So I'll let the strength be 20 for now. Let me show you how I fill it with stuff. Starting with the primary chair in the middle. I did not design it. This was a model from, I'm assuming Sketchfab. I don't have the link because I designed this room a few weeks ago. I forgot to save all the links. I forgot to record the process. I'm really sorry. If this is your model, I really appreciate it because this is the primary focus of my scene. So I appreciate your effort for making this beautiful chair. Okay, once I was done with the main chair, I think I added the hanging plant above. I am incapable of designing something this good. This fern looks so good. I think it again elevates the scene beyond beyond whatever I could do on my own. I think these ferns look great and these extra flowers also. I think I got it off CG Trader. I don't know if you guys know but CG Trader also offers free models. So yeah that kind of worked out really well. So the plant looks really good. This basket though now that I zoom in to it you might be able to tell that I designed this part because it looks janky as hell. Just look at it. <laughs> it's just a sphere with a lot of subdivisions. Like I, I added a lot of subdivision as soon as I added it. And I put a wireframe modifier on it. And it gave it that baskety look that you see. Right? So that kind of worked out. Alright. Once I was done with the hanging plant, 
I think I added some, I think I added the lamp. It's a very simple model. There's nothing complex going on. This, this lampshade as well is pretty simple, just a cylinder with some subsurface. Not some, a lot of subsurface, I don't know why. Uh, and there's a point lamp inside it to give it that nice subsurface-y look. And I gave it an or orange color because it went well with the blue and the light woodish color, I think. If I go to the render mode, I think it looks well. Not now but with a bit of post processing and lowering the contrast a bit i think it looked really good and with the glow as well in the compositing after the lamp was done i think i added some grills on the outside which i think is always a great idea to give you that nice shadow on the back wall i think it gave it a nice touch always and also some trees to get this nice and I think the trees also kind of dim down the whole 20 background strength. It kind of simmers it down. And I get these nice shadows on this part of the wall as well. So there's some light on this section as well. That turned out pretty good as well, I think. And I put a volumetric cube outside. And that dims out, dims it down a little bit more. So yeah, that, that was it, I think. Nothing else. Very simple. Very easy. I think the couch and the plants kind of made it better than... It could have been so yeah that was it that was it for this week and it did state in that video that you should be asking yourself before you start designing a room that who is this room for what does that person use this room for and I forgot about that when I started this scene I remember it once I was done with the scene so let me let me tell you what I think who this room belongs to I think this room belongs to an old person who is retired now and has done well in life and has this separate room made for himself to spend some alone time. What does he do here? I don't know. It looks like a great place to read. If it were to me though, I think this room is great for mass. Sorry, the clip cut off in the middle for some reason. I don't know why. But what I was trying to say was this room looks great for mastering your meditation skills. That's what I wanted to say. So yeah. Before jumping into the next scene, I did want to cover two scenes that I made in between them. The first one was this armchair kind of render, which did not turn out good. And I think I know why. I didn't use any reference images for this scene. I think the first room went well and I thought I could do it on my own without reference images. I wanted to be original. The painting, the floor, the walls, the lighting, it just doesn't work. So, as I said before, reference images are really important. So this went kind of, like, this scene still looks okay, but my third attempt looked even worse. I found this nice, like, cylindrical, spherical room. It was a nice reference image, and because the first room had went well and the second room kind of looked okay, I thought I could make anything. And this is how it turned out. Everything in it looks awful. Even though I use, like, really high-quality models from Sketchfab, it just didn't work out. I don't think... You should be aiming to make dynamo dreams before you can make a good enough donut. That's the mistake that I did here. So limit your expectations. Try to make something simple first and then aim for complex rooms like this. Okay, on to the next room. So again, I started with a nice skeleton. Uh, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> I should have inspected the models before I started making the video. This is just... This just looks scuffed. I think all intermediate and beginner artists can relate to this. This is how janky everything. Oh my God, look at this part. Wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, this, this was the skeleton for the room, which I think is pretty simple. Uh, there's this glass material on this part of the room. There are grills. Uh, I don't know what the f is this. Okay, on to the floor and the wall material. The floor is a, why does, it, why does it look like a barren land? What the f is this? It's a marble material. What the hell? Why does it look like, why does it look like a barren piece of land? Oh, it's the displacement. Oh God. So the wall is just a simple concrete. Not even concrete. There's just noise texture and musgrave texture on it to give it that kind of texture but it's not even visible in the final render. Now onto the lighting which is again a simple SDRI. It looks like this. Um, I don't know what the strength on this is. 1.5. Thank god it's not 20. 
So that was done. Now let's get to the filling up part, which starts with this bed, which I think you know the answer by now. I did not model. It was again a model from Sketchfab. You don't need to waste time on creating this super high quality bed, which I think would take like two, three days, full effort, if you want to do it properly, which is just not worth it. I don't think so. So yeah, the bed, not made by me. Let's get to the curtains. Let me go to the render mode so you can see the effect, which is kind of the main primary thing that is giving this render its look, this nice checkered pattern, which is on the curtain. And I think I put some material on it, like a procedural texture on it to give it that look. Let me see what it was. So yeah, it was just a simple water line texture with distance to edge, and it's just plugged into the alpha through a color ramp. Again, I just stumbled upon it. I just put it in the alpha and I think it was looking good. I think in general, the curtain itself looks really good, but it blocks out a lot of light. So everything goes completely dark. So I put it into the alpha to get some light in. And I think the checkered pattern looks good. I think it's a bit overboard. I think I'm pretty sure people might think that it's a bit overboard, but it's, it's a nice style. It's a nice style. I don't, I don't, I don't 100% love it. I don't 100% hate it. It's this nice space in the middle. I like it. So I kept it. But yeah, this was the curtain. Then I added the side cabinet, which if I zoom into it, I think I made the side cabinet, which you can clearly tell again, because it looks janky as hell. Look at this horrible material on the front. And this horrible beveled handle this looks ugly as hell so i think it's pretty clear that i made it the phone again is also just a cube with an emission material on the front face of it pretty janky i made that not very proud of it but i think it looks okay from distance the book looks really good so that's obviously not something that i made i put the phone there with an emission material like i tried putting a lamp there but that again shifted the focal point from the middle to that part like you immediately your eye goes to that part, but this phone illumination doesn't do do that. So I put it there, just to bring some attention to the left side as well. The cabinet is not visible at all, which is, I don't think this left side of the scene looks, uh, it looks way too dark. I wish I could fix that. Maybe I'll try to fix it in post, but it doesn't look really well, but I think the right side looks okay. So yeah, I added these slippers, which are also not, very clearly visible but it just gives a feeling that somebody lives in this room actually lives in this room i did again add some trees on the outside to give to get some dynamic shadows on this part which i think gives it a natural look it's just simple tree models on the outside so yeah that's it this was the scene i think it turned out good enough not as well as the first scene i think but it has this unique kind of look because of the curtain. I think it looks it looks unique, not 100% well. I think I would give it seven out of or six out of 10. And the first scene, maybe eight out of 10. It looks good. It has its own kind of vibe and I like it. So I kept it. But yeah, that's it. These were the rooms. This was my first attempt at making interior designs. Two failed attempts and two kind of successful attempts. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I could do to fix these scenes if you have some tips and tricks. But that's it for this video. Subscribe if you're into scene breakdowns like this. I'm gonna make plenty more in the future. Thank you for watching if you did. I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.